Welcome to college. You're about to get a lot of email. Dealing with the amount of email you get in college is a good is good practice for dealing with the amount of email that you're going to in the life. And I just want to talk a little bit as far as sending email, I think there's some hard and fast rules to follow. When it comes to receiving and dealing with the email that you get, the rule is simple. Do what works for you. But it has to work. So, for example, if I send you an email and you tell me I never got the email, I tend to think that you're wrong because email gets sent and if email doesn't get sent, I get a message saying that the message couldn't be delivered. So the first pro tip is you're responsible for email that's sent to your address. You need to read it on some level, process the information. I will promise to make sure that the emails that we send are as informative and as pithy as possible. But you actually do need to read them, uh, particularly emails that are sent to your at buffalo.edu address. You're responsible for those contents. Now, how do you deal with lots and lots and lots of email? So, I'm a faculty member, I get a fair amount of email. However, I've taken some steps to try to avoid getting lots of email because email is difficult to, to process. It's just boring. I don't want to spend all day send, sending email. Um, and you can see this is my actual email inbox and I have no new mail right now, which is awesome, right? So my inbox is clean. Um, how did I get to this state? Let me just offer some tips. And again, you just need to do something that works for you. And work by works for you, I mean that you can't complain about the amount of email you get. You have to be able to handle it. You have to be able to handle it in some way. Let me tell you what I do. The first thing I do is I get off as many email lists as possible. So, you know, play a little game where when you get an email from some store or whatever, you find the unsubscribe link at the bottom and you click on it. A lot of us, you know, there's something a little fun about getting a new message in our inbox and you see the little number there and you think it could be something exciting, like a message from someone that you like and you're maybe talking to or whatever. But a lot of times if it's like, you know, a new promotion from some store that you went to, that's not interesting. So get off those email lists or at least get them into some part of the email inbox where they're not looking like new mail that could be important. In my case, I don't want that mail. So when I get mail from any sort of promotion, anything like that, I just hit unsubscribe and that reduces the amount of email uh, considerably. The second trick is to not use email for things that email is not good for. Um, when you're interacting with faculty members, um, email is a common way of getting in touch with us. But think about who you're emailing with, who's the right person to contact, process some of the information that we've given you before. So if we say, you know, please email this person with this issue, email that person with that issue, and then they'll, you know, you'll have less email to manage because you'll be talking to the right people. In certain cases, email is a kind of a terrible way to communicate with people. It's more effective to talk to someone in person. One of the reasons I don't get very much email is because I've set up my, uh, you know, life here at UB so that I can talk to a lot of the people that I need to talk to about things rather than exchanging email. Uh, because communicating, talking, whether it's on the phone or in person, is a much, much higher bandwidth conversation than email is. And and frequently, it's a much, much faster way to get things done. So for example, if you have some question about undergraduate advising, you could exchange like 10 emails with Donna, or you could come in and you could have a conversation with her that might last two minutes and you could address the issue. So that, that second thing is much more preferable. Another thing that I do is I make very, very aggressive use of email filtering. So I try to categorize my email. You see I have some categories over here. Uh, this is work email that's related to the research I do here. I have a teaching folder with a lot of stuff that's related to my teaching role here at the university. Administration, you know, that's sort of like uh, stuff that has to do with my administrative role here. Um, home, that's email from friends, family, um, and then this phone lab folder has to do with the test bed I run here. So what I've tried to do, and I have like probably 100 or 200 or 300 Gmail filters that try to push mail into the right place. So when Greg emails me, it goes right into this teaching folder. The other thing I do, which I know is very weird, and I'm probably one of the only people on the planet doing this, but I learned this from a guy that I um, was an office mate with at MIT a long time ago. When I filter mail into these folders, I mark it red immediately. So I never have new mail on these folders. 
And what that does is it cuts down on the number of distractions that you have during the day. So if I want to read email, I go into the teaching folder and then I look and I see, okay, are there new messages? And if there are, then I respond to them. Uh, but I don't have these little things sitting here being like, oh, there's 10 new messages. Because to some degree, when you're trying to concentrate, that's just a little bit of a lure. It's like, come read me. There's new messages. Who knows what it could be? Um, and I don't want that. I want to be able to focus a little bit more. So when I'm doing email, I go into those folders, I look at things. When I'm not doing email, I avoid I avoid the distractions of having these new messages in there all the time. I also use these folders sort of like a to-do list. So when I leave mail in the folder, it's because there's something there that still needs to get done. And this is a, a mail strategy that's sometimes referred to as the getting things done mail strategy. Uh, so you're kind of using mail as almost like a to-do list. So if I have some mail left in this teaching folder, it's because there's something I need to do that the mail helps me remember, or I need to respond to the mail and I haven't done that yet. In certain cases, that takes a little while, while longer. In general, there's not a huge amount of mail in these folders. Um, you know, so here's my work folder. And this is new, um, this is new, this is something I need to you know, talk to Wes about. So you know, there are, uh, the, the email in this folder is designed to, to help me remember about certain things I have to do. So again, that's my system. I know it may seem a little weird or unorthodox. Um, but the high level point is you're going to receive a lot of email. Take steps to try to make sure the email that you receive is useful. That's my sort of number one general tip. Get off useless mailing lists. Talk to people as much as possible. And then find ways to help have the computer email program help you deal with mail. So you're not spending your whole day trying to you know, uh, find mail and respond to things and stuff like that. Email is kind of boring, right? There are more interesting things to do to life than send email. Uh, talk to people, uh, build cool websites, whatever. So you know, try to make email work for you. College is a great time to figure that out. Um, if you want more advice about this, I'd be happy to talk about it more. Uh, good luck.